Yeah, baby, we're back. We are, and this is uh, I'm the, it's a it's a full house. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, we're excited because uh, the, uh, we were talking about we were gonna have for the first time. Uh, we we never really have goalkeepers on the show. No, we've uh, had players on before. We've never had goalkeepers. Goalkeeper, on but now we have. I think we have all the goalkeepers. Uh, we, all of them. We f- fulfilled the allotment for <laughs> like the next two years. All the goalkeepers yeah. are here. I dare you to find another podcast that got this many goalkeepers. No, on. No, not even close. They're not even close. Yeah. How many goalkeepers? Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, I feel like you guys should introduce yourselves because we, we do have a lot of people. So please, uh, so uh, we ha- you were on the show uh, before. Please introduce yourself. I'm Tori Corsaro. I work at the Keeper Institute with these guys. Okay. I'm Maria Lloyden. I'm one of the owners of the Keeper Institute. Uh, my name is Jill Lloyden. I own the Keeper Institute, coach there, played pro for a bunch of years. That's right. Okay. So we've got... The Keeper Institute. Yeah. <laughs> the whole yeah. thing is here. So every everything we any questions that we have about goalkeeping, we, I mean, it's gonna get sorted out. It's right It's gonna now. happen right now. <laughs> but uh, we're excited to have you guys. And so to- Tori, uh, you were on the show uh, before a couple uh, two years, ago, two years ago. And the way we, we we that happened because we knew uh, there was a, a comedian uh, who we've known for years. Uh, who you are is uh, your relation is sister's boyfriend. Sister's boyfriend. Yeah. Okay, sister's not married yet. So no. it's like. It's I'm not right. you're not it's not sister-in-law or no. brother-in-law no. kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, so he had mentioned uh, to us he was like, hey, I have uh, I know someone who's a uh, goalkeeper. And then so we had you on the show and we were mm-hmm. talking about your career. So I, I kind of want to start here and just sort of let's get back and figure out where where Tori is. Well, we promised our fans we would Two follow up, so later. this is it. Oh, here we go. Here's the follow up. Yeah. I thought you forgot. No, I've been waiting for the call. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, you were uh, you were playing. Uh, you were the last I remember. You were trying out for Sky Blue. Yes. Okay. So we left off, and I was picking up my life to move to New Jersey to actually work with these two. I always say that I Kool Aid man my way into their lives. I was like, yeah. all right, I'm coming. I need your training, <laughs> and I want to be a professional. It's so. one of those things where you're like, so what are we doing? And they're like, wait, who is this? <laughs> no, Why exactly. Like, that's we? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> and who are you again? Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty much that, and I moved there, trained there. For for a few months and then ended up trying out for Sky Blue. I uh, was fortunate enough to make it in that preseason and then kind of hung around for the rest of the season, playing in practice, learning, growing with the girls, uh, getting to work with these two pretty much every day. And while doing that, I also ended up coaching at the Keeper Institute. Um, as I continued on, I played a little bit more, tried to go overseas, and then recently in these last couple of months decided that I was ready to be done trying to pursue sorry, pursue a professional career and really kind of pick up at the coaching area. Okay. So yeah. the the reason your story was always so fascinating when we spoke, and and a lot of people who listened were just like, This girl, like the 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 kind of drive that she must have is incredible because you are not the tallest of goalkeepers. No. And that was always the thing that stood out, right? Yeah, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that. <laughs> that's a great advertisement for the goal, the keeper institute. <laughs> Wait, she isn't? Oh my god, I never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, uh, so uh, uh, is it okay to ask a woman's height? I don't know if that's like <laughs> one of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. But especially in this profession. Okay, so I, uh, if, what was your height again? Five three. Five three. So and with I remember heels. that's with no, heels. it's not. I'm <laughs> you got a measuring tape yeah. right platforms. here. You've platforms. never. I was gonna say you've never seen platform boots, uh, soccer yeah. boots before. Check them out. Yeah. How tall? Them how long are those studs? Are about seven inches. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? If I could have gotten those, yeah, yeah. So I'd I, have them. Yeah. I, so I remember watching your like highlight reel, mm-hmm. and 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 that's the thing that stands out. I'm like, yo, you, this, you is a li- this is a little baby <laughs> in the in the net, but, but she's like making everywhere. crazy saves. Remember that? You know that gif of the cat blocking the the the, the little yeah. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. I was like, nothing's getting past this girl. <laughs> so uh, as, yeah, so as soon as I saw that, uh, uh, th- that was like uh, the, the thing that I think it, honestly it was I think a little bit kind of inspirational for people because you almost sounded insane. Yeah. To the degree where you like, I'm yeah. I'm not gonna let this hold me back, and people have told me that I can't make it, and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, it seemed like you had heard all the reasons why you couldn't, and you were like, all right, I've got answers for all of them, which is what you need. I mean, you know, we're we're pursuing comedy, so you hear a million reasons why that's it's a like a little bit idea. of delusion. Yeah, you have like to have. It's like to. that. You have to have like be humble but narcissistic at the exact same time. Oh, yeah, that's a great yeah. combo. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think this is why we get along with goalkeepers so much. <laughs> yeah. So it's so it's good to hear that uh, this is where you are. 
right now. So I think we can kind of pick up. So now, uh, uh, so Jillian, uh, so Jill and Maria, so you guys, uh, she, she, this, she, the interview went well, right? When Tori got there and it, clearly uh, she's on board. So, uh, so we should talk about your career, Jillian. And uh, you, you did play pro. You, play, uh, you have uh, a few caps on uh, the women's national team. Uh, pretty dope. Pretty dope. Okay. <laughs> I know it's like, I know it's Tori's day, but let's talk yeah. about Jill. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what is, uh, I guess, uh, how, how do you get to where you are? What is the Goalkeeper Institute and, and sort of the, the goal for all of, all of that? I mean, yeah. So when I was like 10 years old, I went to the Olympics and I got to see our U.S. Women's National Team win an Olympic medal. And I turned to my grandmom that day and I said, I want to do that. And she laughed at me. Okay. She laughed at me. You know, Hilarious. similar to what people would say about Tori, how her dreams are crazy. And so I pursued this career. Uh, I got recruited only to two colleges. That was it. Villanova, Rutgers, went to Villanova, got some really good goalkeeper coaching. And that changed my life. And after that, became an All-American, played pro for a while on our national team for five years. And so I attribute all that success back to a good goalkeeper coach who, like, believes in you and wants to empower you with the knowledge that you need and um, motivate you. And so that's what we do in an area where there was nothing when I was growing up. So um, I started the Keeper Institute in 2013. Maria was my first hire. She's now my wife. Apparently, that's how it works. What a beautiful thing. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Um, and now we get to work with hundreds of goalkeepers a year and help them chase their dreams. How does, what is the, what, the choice, like when I was a kid and I first played soccer, they made me goalkeeper because I was fat. <laughs> so like, kid, get in there. You know what I mean? And I wasn't good at it, right? So eventually, surprise. I, found, <laughs> I, know, I know. By the way, the lack of sandwiches Spoiler. back there, it really ruins it for But I eventually became a pretty good defender, but I didn't continue playing in high school. What is it about, how do you find a child, and what, what, what is it in a, in a child's skill set that makes them want to be a goalkeeper? Because it's like, I want to play soccer, but I don't want to go out there and play it. It's yeah. like this, it's this weird you other know, you, position. You know when you see them ripping off the heads of Barbie yeah. dolls. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're a little different. When that something's a keeper. little off, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's usually the first cue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they take a snowball to the head and they don't flinch like that kid's a keeper. <laughs> I think it's different for everybody. And but I, you guys are now like having an academy, so like, what do you see oh. in a lot of different kids. When you yeah. see like, <laughs> what happens when you see like a striker and you're like, nah, that kid's gonna be a keeper in the future? What is it that you notice? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I feel like, like you said, the most unathletic kids are now goalkeepers. Right. Um, but it was the opposite for me. I mean, we lost every game 6 0 that year, but I was the most athletic kid and I was the tallest kid, and then they put me in. And um, from my second game ever, I was a goalkeeper. And I think that our best athletes need to be goalkeepers, not our worst athletes. Like, right. okay. our goalkeepers have to be so quick and powerful and be able to turn on a dime and like organize and communicate and have those leadership skills where someone who's unathletic is you're not really going to do well as a goalkeeper but no it's like, true there's facts <laughs> <laughs> you're literally staring at it there's empirical evidence yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i think also it's just being courageous as a kid and like you said not being afraid to take a ball off the face and uh for me i played an all boys team when i was a kid and none of the boys wanted to play in the goal they just wanted to play on the field because they were scared of getting hit with the ball. Right. So I was like, well, I'll do it. And that's how I got stuck there for the rest it's of the day. It's always so someone's like, fine, I'll do it. And yeah. next thing you know, they're like, pro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's always like somehow you found this thing you love by, you know, by happenstance. When one of my the most frustrating things when I hang out with someone who's a goalkeeper or play goalkeeper is we're all watching soccer. There's an amazing goal scored. Everyone's <laughs> half the crowd is enjoying themselves, <laughs> half the crowd is sad. And there's one person, one goddamn person going, well, oh, their footwork was off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're ruining the fun yeah. of the game. <laughs> it was a screamer. It was this. It was, look at the shot. And they're like, no, everyone else would have stopped that. He's going to get talked to this, 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 or she's going to get talked to that, that, that in, in training. What is happening? Do you, is that how you watch a game now, or can you watch yeah, you a game? Watch you, a don't game watch, you don't want to watch. You don't want to join in on Soccer yeah, Saturday. No. Uh, I'm coming over to the Lloyd house. <laughs> If you could barge in, I'm barging in. Cool, hey, man. Yeah. Two point out. Yeah. I'm group punch. I don't know yeah. what you are. I'll be tropical punch. Uh, there we go. Yeah. I'm Caribbean. So, <laughs> can you not watch a, a soccer game, or do you focus solely on what the keeper's doing? I mean, it depends. If we know the goalkeeper and goal, we're obviously fans and we're cheering. Like, I don't know Allison Becker, but I'm a Liverpool fan, so I watch that for fun. I'm not going to critique one of the best goalkeepers in the world like, right. that often, but I still do it. <laughs> um, but no, typically when we're watching MLS or NWSL, we're like, what were they doing? What right, were right. they thinking? They could have had that. Um, but we're obviously watching with the um, 
knowledgeable eye and being able to identify different things and have an opinion on who we think is the best and like who should be going to the World Cup, things like that. Yeah. So speaking of that, uh, who 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 stands out from like the goalkeeping class now? Because I know they're uh, like Adriana French was like one of the people that people were always surprised never really got a cap until fairly recently. Uh, is anybody in particular that stands out to you that's just like, oh, this person's going to definitely get us, uh, you know, another World Cup? I mean, I, th I feel like, and I don't know because I don't have knowledge of this, but I feel that Alyssa, Ashlyn, and AD will probably be the ones that go. Okay. Ashlyn and is incredible. I've watched I, a few Pride games. She's so good. She's amazing. My I mean, wife she's is my, She would be my choice. Yeah. I, I love Ashlyn. I think she has a great presence. She's the best 1v1 goalkeeper in the entire world. Yeah, she can't strike the ball as far as some other goalkeepers, but I want a goalkeeper who can keep the ball at the back of the net. Yeah. yeah. yeah can't I'm, you just get the center back to come back and kick the ball? I mean, is, that <laughs> big, is it that big of a deal? Yeah, at the World Cup, you're going to yeah. have your center back come back and take your goal case. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to play with the sweeper, too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Ooh, let's bring that it back. Sweeper yeah. stopper. The old WM's coming back. Like, I, I mean, if, if you're a great goalkeeper, this one thing that doesn't necessarily equate to you stopping a shot shouldn't keep you from playing, it, I think. It's certainly important. And when you play on the U.S. Women's National Team, you're using your feet way more than you're using right. your hands. I mean, you're there to be an outlet, to solve pressure, um, to initiate the attack, and it certainly is super important. Um, but at the end of the day, I want that goalkeeper who's going to come up with that one big save and do everything else that they're supposed to do. So in my opinion, that would be Ashlyn. Would you, how do you feel about, or this is for all three of you, how do you feel about the way goalkeeping seems to be changing where it is becoming one of the sort of quote unquote the 11, you know what I mean? It seems like a lot of goalkeepers, Etherson seems to be leading the charge there, but it seems like you're now just as an important part of the buildup of the play as where previously you have like your, you know, your Brad Friedels and stuff that just were like, oh, I'll kick it. And then you guys have to deal with it. Yeah, It's like the, the attack starts with the goalkeeper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Tiago Moda, who was like, I consider them a midfielder, which is like, okay, well, Tiago, you need to stop smoking. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Midfielder? <laughs> At least center back. Give us something, you know? Well, su super important. I mean, Zach Steffen had, like, an assist in the, of assist a couple – maybe it was last week. Yeah, where yeah. The ball MLS went assist, the second assist. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really important. And be just being able to solve pressure and being an outlet to keep the ball and retain possession has been become so important. It's hard to get possession back, and you can – beat teams in transition. So being able to start the attack like a Jordan Pickford is going to be super important. And matter of fact, I think that's his X factor. Why he's actually on the team is because he can start transition and create right. opportunities for his team on the attack. Is that something that maybe previously, like when you guys were coming up, you didn't really focus on footwork as much. And now that's like an integral part of the game. If you're a goalkeeper, because it seems to me like I remember when I was young, someone said like, all right, dude, like athleticism, not your thing. But if you want to be something, they're like, Catcher, pitcher, or like the long snapper. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like these specialty things no one else is doing it. Go do that. And like, I wouldn't have to work on other stuff. But now it seems like that's part of like, if you're in the future, if you're going to play soccer, you need to be someone who's just as good as a midfielder with the ball if you're a goalkeeper, which probably 10 years ago didn't really matter as much. That was like a cool thing you could do, right? Yeah. I mean, when I was, when I got to college, I did not take my own goal kicks. I couldn't get them outside the 18. No lie. Serious. Could not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew up in a single How family. How to go backwards? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a uh, single parent home, so my mom couldn't take me everywhere, and I had one soccer ball. And I used to put freaking olive oil on my soccer ball and bring it to practice so it looked shiny and new. Like, that's how that's I had one ball. And yeah. so. That might I, be the most Jersey thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like, no, seriously. Put like, a little olive oil, a little <laughs> EVO oil. Like, I, I wasn't getting a new ball. That was it. I wanted it to look nice and shiny and presentable. I would shine my boots at every training and, and um, game, but. I have one ball, so who am I going to play with with one ball and take goal kicks? Right, yeah. And no one to teach me to how to take goal kicks in the ghetto of Vineland, New Jersey. Right. So <laughs> when I got to college, I had like a bag of balls and a field to go every day. Yeah, yeah. So I learned how to strike a ball every day before and after practice. Um, and so being able to distribute the ball was a complete afterthought. Complete afterthought. I, I'm curious, how, how do goalkeepers develop, uh, I guess, almost like their personalities as far as screaming at their center backs, right? This seems to be a very common... <laughs> I mean, it seems to be like... a. I don't know if it's a thing where coaches are like... Uh, they're basically the coach, right? To some degree, like, on the, on the pitch. They're like the other captain. Yeah, we always say that they... Being a goalkeeper is synonymous for being a leader on right. the team. You don't have an option. Yeah. Whether you are to be a leader or not, if you're you can't in be position, a quiet goalkeeper. You can't be a quiet goalkeeper. Honestly, I could never play center back in front of you. It would have yeah, made me better. cry every game. <laughs> 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 the thing is, and I always say this to our kids, is like 
I was very vocal goalkeeper and <laughs> maybe too vocal. Sometimes. That might be the nicest way to put it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I destroyed some souls. <laughs> However, I feel as though I did a really good job with having relationships with those players that were playing in front of me. So if I was screaming at them in a game, they weren't taking it personally and they knew that it was because I loved them and our team and I needed them to work harder. How or do better. What is that balance, though? Like, is it one of those things where, like, you got to, like, all right, let me buy some beers after the game? Like, because, you know, no. maybe I was a little rough. Like, where, where's the balance of relationship building? Because, if you know, a lot of people don't know that, but defenders are, like, the last line before the goalkeeper. So it's almost like you guys all treat yourselves like one unit. Mm -hmm. The defenders and the goalkeeper is, like, what well, that's one part of the team. That's, like, a team in and, of, in and of itself. So what is that balance that allows sort of where you have to, like, be their friend and, like, hey, we're all cool, but also I'm going to – I'm going to ridicule you if you don't get it right. Because yeah. that's all we see when a goal goes in. Keeper immediately just blames the center back. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. For sure. I think it's important for goalkeepers to know that they have to speak to their players in different manners based on different personalities of the personnel. Yeah. Right? If I'm playing center back with maybe someone like Jill, who's a little <laughs> bit more on the sensitive side, then <laughs> maybe my delivery needs to be a little bit better. And trust me, we would deal with this in our personal lives. What about yeah. me? What is your Tori, delivery? Tori, again, like sensitive. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe one of you guys, I can be like, hey, get your shit together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm tough. Yeah. I just want everyone to know. That. <laughs> That's the only way I respond, by the way. If someone's like, excuse me, would you mind doing this? I'm like, I'm never doing that. So I guess I don't have to do that, is what you're saying? Cool. Optional. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's optional to clear the yeah. ball? Okay. If my wife's like, what are you doing? Why don't you do this? I'd be like, oh my God, I should do that. <laughs> is there anything uh, particular that stands out that you have said that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that to another human being? Didn't I'll, you get a card? I'll never admit. <laughs> Didn't you get a card in a game she says for that? Pass. For yelling at your own teammate? I, I may or may not have gotten a card for cursing at my own teammate in college. That is hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot because it, it can't just be a, a, a you it, know, yeah, a casual a, swear yeah, word. It wasn't subtle. <laughs> I got I got a yellow once because I said kick the shit out of him, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's because I told him to kick. Him. He was like, no, it's because you said shit. He's like, also, oh, here's another yellow for reminding me. You said kick. I was like, oh no, that's when the red one comes out. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, my bad. I also was playing in jean shorts, so you know we didn't take it too seriously. <laughs> so um, I did want to talk to you guys because you uh, have uh, worked with Sky Blue, right? Uh, for Shouts to Cloud Nine. You played for Sky Blue. Uh, and uh, and you were coaching with Sky Blue as well. So um, so we were at um, the the Independent Supporters Council in uh, Dallas at a conference, and uh, so we got to meet uh, the the. Uh, heads of the supporters group Cloud9 and sort of, uh, I, I think it's always different when we like we, you read stuff on the news about what's going on with uh, with clubs and all this other stuff and but when you see like a person being like, hey look, this is what's really going on and it's like a real bummer and it's like a bit of a struggle especially someone who cares so much exactly, so you know? um, so yeah th they were, it, th so just a uh, maybe a quick synopsis of like what was going on and I, uh, the, the, what I read was like there were issues with like locker rooms, resources. It was just like not much given to the Sky Blue players to kind of be able to help them do their job. It was almost like a negligence. Yes. So uh, to to you could hear the sighing. <laughs> but yeah. to some degree, I mean, it's a level of frustration. I, I'm curious, like, I kind of like what your experience was like. I mean, I, I think this stuff is is fairly public that people weren't happy with it. But uh, I think you, since you especially played for the team, you you have a first hand experience of what happened. Well, I think first and foremost, we want to thank Cloud Nine for bringing awareness to this uh, issue. And when I was on the team, they had representatives at every single game, no matter if it was in Portland, Seattle, at, at every game. They Shouts would come to Cloud to. Nine, yeah. Yeah, and they were super supportive um, and really, really were engaged with us and, and helping us try to grow the community of football in that area. Um, but I think, like you said, you heard sighs from us. And I think what we're really frustrated with is the treatment of players um, not getting what they need to become a professional. So like a lot of these players are coming from more professional environments in college and then coming to our sky blue team where there was no locker rooms, there was no like support groups. There is the stadium what is a college stadium, but like, you know, I, I call games in the sec and like these stadiums are amazing compared to what sky blue is playing in. And right. And, and you see what happens, like the best player in the world, Sam Kerr, leaves. 
yep. and Kelly O'Hara leaves because they put in the time and they're just like, we can't do anything anymore and we can't change it and we can't change it from the inside out. And so to better our own careers, we have to leave. Yeah. Which is really sad because they had two of the best players in the world on their team. And now it's, you know, and draft players are like, well, I'm going overseas because I can't go to place for Sky Blue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, we were there. We were at the NWSL draft and – you know, we were just excited to see it and get to meet some of the uh, the future players in the NWSL. And all the chatter was about how when Sky Blue makes this pick, the player has already said they're not going to play there. And we were like, what is – that's when we were first, like, really made aware because that was before we got to the uh, to Dallas. We were like, what's really happening? Because we had heard chatter that there was, like, frustration, but we didn't know it was at that level where players were like, nah, I'm not going – that's got to be frustrating for someone who put their heart, sweat, and te- like you know their blood, sweat, and tears into helping that 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 team develop. And then we meet the supporters who are like, we're putting our all, we're putting our money on the line, we're going to these things, we're going to. Th- you can hear them chanting at the NWSL draft, and all of a sudden it's like they, you guys care way more than the owners do. Yeah, it's unfortunate because I think they do have players who really do care, and they have a coaching staff that really does care. I mean, Denise is their coach now, and she was my biggest advocate when I was a player and she she was the first person that told me Jill you're gonna play on the national team one day and she used to get up I mean at like 7 a.m. or we would train at 7 a.m. every day Uh, I wouldn't pay her she would just do it out of the kindness of her heart because she wanted to help me and I truly do believe in Denise I think she's a great great coach great person Um, I just think with the lack of resources it's difficult for her to do her job and do her job well where she's having to worry about housing and all these things instead of tactics instead of football and like hey where are we going to practice today and is is the grass going to be cut or we're at a town field so like hey am I going to be able to train or is it going to be too slow um, so it's, it's really unfortunate. And I think that there's definitely been opportunities to move facilities okay. to maybe sell the team. Um, but I mean, from what we know now that they're trying to make it better. So I guess that's all they can do from here on out. That's yeah. a good, uh, so they're stepping into the right, they're moving in the right yeah. direction. Yeah. I think at the very least, like, uh, you know, we were talking before, I'm like, it's not, I'm not personally here to just like trash sky blue. It's like, I think it's uh, sort of similar to what cloud nine is doing. It's just like raising some awareness. Cause, cause there is, uh, you have I, to learn from your mistakes. So sometimes you have to call those mistakes out. Exactly. And, and we had, uh, Yal Averbush on the show, uh, and she had, uh, she had, Put, um, she had tweeted uh, just like a, a kind of nice statement saying like if you are a fan of women's soccer it might be even if you can't go to games buy season tickets somewhere support a team help the league grow uh, and it'll be a good start so that's like a, a thing just in general just to, so it can sort of be on our minds and if we can help Sky Blue in a, in a way that will lead to these better resources I think that is a thing that should be done do you think it would help uh, like in Europe it seems like a lot of the, the, uh, the women's teams are associated with the men's team do you think that would help in America? I mean, it certainly would help. Um, shared resources wouldn't hurt anyone. It's kind of happening in Orlando, right? And in Orlando. Portland. And in Portland. Portland. Yeah. But there are some other successful Houston. clubs. Yeah, there are some other successful clubs without an MLS support. Yeah. Um, but it's like complete buy-in. Like the Seattle owner is amazing and just completely giving his team whatever they need and having one of the best coaches and, and some of the best players on their team and they're happy. They're happy with where they are and what – and that they're getting better and they're developing their careers and stuff. So it can be done. It's just maybe a little harder. Um, but what Orlando is doing is incredible. Yeah, it's that, that's incredible. Actually, I have a, when uh, Ali and, and Ashlyn announced their engagement, I showed uh, my wife and uh, she saw the picture and she's like, wait a minute. I know her. I'm like, Ashlyn, you know Ashlyn? I'm like, how? You ain't from there. You know what I mean? And she's like, no, I know her. She's like, I follow her on Instagram. She's amazing. She's like, I love her style. She's like, she's a goalkeeper? And I was like, what world am I in? You know, I was like, she's just like, she's like, I remember when she cut her hair. She was like, my wife sees her as like a style maven. Oh, yeah, you know? she was like a fashion icon yeah. as well. Yeah. I was like, she's like, yo, she's so badass. And I'm like, yeah, Ashlyn yeah. is. I'm like, well, we had her wife or her future wife on our podcast. She's like, oh, I should listen. I'm like, all right, I don't even know. How are we now? Well, now now she's interested. Yeah, yeah. Now you get into it. I think, what, what do you, have you seen some of the scenes that's going on in Europe with the Juventus completely selling out their stadium uh, for the women's team and, and just some of the way that these, uh, some of the teams are being supported out there. Do you think that's good or do you think that's a sign that maybe some of the American players are going to start leaving here and going to Europe? I don't know. I, I truly believe though that this is the best league in the world. Um, every game is super competitive. There's n- typically not blowouts like you would see in other leagues where maybe one or two teams are good and and everyone else is is struggling. Um, I think our our league is the best in the world and I think players should want to stay here and develop our game here and 
be trailblazers for the next generation of young players and and grow the league. I mean, it's the most successful women's league so far in the U.S. after three, two or three failed attempts. So yeah. they're doing something right. Yeah, some teams can clean up some areas, but they're doing things right. And, and players are happy, and that's why they're staying. Yeah, and there's no team named after, like, a scam internet phone thing. So we were moving in the right direction. Are you making fun of Are my magic about- jacket? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, the, guy, the owner got arrested, didn't he? No, he didn't get arrested. <laughs> yes, he did. It turned out to be You're a scam. You're close to home no. there. <laughs> magic Jack was a scam, wasn't it? No, it Not wasn't the team, the actual product. I mean, I don't think so. You're like, I still use it. (laughs) I don't have an iPhone. I just plug these into USBs as I go about my day. I love my Magic Jack and my DSL connection. Yeah. Yeah. And no one's paying me to say that. Yeah. Now, where can I plug in this record player? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Uh, So the the World Cup is coming up uh, this summer. Uh, Are you guys excited about it? Is there any... um, I I feel like this is one of the few times where the... I I don't know. I'm not going to say the U.S. is not the favorite but it's like the competition is definitely definitely oh, g- yeah. growing and getting a lot better and, and we saw it in the she believes cup that the u.s is not just uh running through these teams so which wh- by the way shouts to us because it's because america was so good that everyone kind of caught up right yeah right, same <laughs> so, boom. and women's you're welcome rights. you're welcome and women's rights yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh for sure <laughs> please, please excuse my feminist life <laughs> yeah, yeah no please let it go girl. no Let's no title and i had nothing to do with it yeah. it was mostly <laughs> just us playing yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we're just incredible <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what? Yeah, what? How do you feel uh, uh, about this upcoming World Cup? I'm wow, they're so excited. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I thought that hesitation was ominous. No, no, no. I'm I still just... think the U.S. is favorites to win. I mean, Clearly. our athleticism plus our young, talented players who are bringing like a, a tactical awareness to the game and their technique is amazing. Um, I still think that we're heavy favorites. Our bench is so deep. We have some of the best players in the world. Um, the best spine, I think, in in the entire world. So, I mean, I think we're heavy favorites. Okay. Yeah. I know in the past, Jill, uh, way back in the past, Jill was uh, sort of, uh, you know, one of the big knocks against her is she didn't play a lot of the youth players. She didn't play all the young players. And I think you could see that there, maybe that was like a sign of like kind of a, ju- a golden generation to some degree, right? But what do you who do you think is like someone that if, if someone's starting to pick up women's soccer now for the first time, and you know all the big names, right? You know all the people that are that are been popular for a long time. Who are some of the young players that they should look out for that are like really going to shock everybody? Is there anyone that you guys that comes up to mind? We've recently become bigger Julie Ertz fans, I yeah. think. Yeah. Sure. And she's awesome. And she's willing to take a tackle and she's willing to fight for her team, which I think is one area of question mark um, in some of like the younger players. Is There's no doubt that they're very talented, but are they willing to like fight in a bloodbath? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This is Sparta. So. Yeah, you certainly need that enforcer in there. Um, I'm a huge Lindsay Horan fan. I think that she can do it on both sides of the ball, 18 to 18. Um, she can set people up. She can score on set pieces. She's always a threat. But the young players like Rose Lavelle, Mal Pugh have come in. and they're... Calabrico, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Having that yeah. fiery kind of energy. Danny yeah. Calabrico, I think. Well, is... She was at our show. and She was on stage with us at our show in uh, in, in Chicago. And afterwards, I, we followed each other and I, she posted a clip. I was like, damn, <laughs> she takes people out. Yeah, when yeah, she yeah. Wants. yeah, it was a bloodbath on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was a maniac. She got the real heart. <laughs> yeah, she's hilarious too. Yeah, it's always kind of, I almost am dumbfounded at the end of NWSL seasons when the Red Stars don't do better than they do. Sure. Like, they have so much talent and Colaprico in the middle setting up, like Sam Kerr. Sam, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. they mm-hmm. should be favorites to win the league in my opinion, but I That's don't know. That's fair. Uh, Dope as jerseys, though. Yeah. Yeah, I love their kits, man. I wish you know, yeah. let's make a double XL, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Who would you get? I would. I probably get. I'd probably get Calaprico just because I'd be afraid of her uh, tackling me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't or maybe uh, else. Uh, Gordon. Also Gordon, because our friend is. Uh, is dating her at the at the moment, Sarah L. Oh, Gordon? Sarah yeah. Gordon, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, yeah, I love the Red Stars kit in general. It looks like the flag. The, it's so yeah, dope. It's I cool. kind of wish the Chicago Fire had that. You know what I mean? Like as opposed to going with this red, like that that sort of uh, skyish blue. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. to use. Oh, yeah. I throw the yeah. ish in there. <laughs> yeah. And the, the five yeah, stars yeah. so dope. Uh, and they have that dope zip up jacket that looks like mine, but it's those colors. I need I'm to get her. Like, I need to get. I'm her. all about merch right now. <laughs> Yeah. I need to get a Rapino jersey. That's the that that's the uh, one that just a, you just throw a legend on your back like yeah, that. Right? You're, gonna do You're only ten yeah. years overdue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let me go order my Mia Ham jersey yeah. as well. See, I'm gonna be I'm just gonna be like, yo, you ever heard of Omega Rapino? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't know you don't know things I know. Yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe up you're not up on these youth players yeah. as I am. <laughs> New and upcoming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, well, guys, th- this has been unreal. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. So, uh, Where can people find uh, the Keeper Institute? Well, they can visit us at www.thekeeperinstitute.com. That was yeah. Don't forget to go to www. And then, www. And then you can get the yeah. website. Um, or just at the Keeper Institute on Instagram. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, and, and in general, it's uh, the purpose is to, to get a young kids and obviously teach them teach them all, all the ways of, uh, of goalkeeping. Yeah, we have like a holistic approach. So we try to educate them on every aspect of the position. So from the technical and tactical side um, to the mental side, we show them video. We have a performance coach. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop for goalkeepers. What's a, I'm just curious. What's a mental... Uh, exercise. Uh, what? What? How do you introduce that? Meant the first. How mental- long do you have? Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just kick balls at them, see if they flinch. Just like yeah, if I wanted to get into goalkeeping and I was starting out, what would be the first mental exercise I would kind of go through? You can't hear this, but they all just went like, "You ain't got it." Like, we can already hey. tell we sized you up. Yeah. yeah you was weak, it, son. Was it the really, really wanting a Megan Rapinoe jersey? <laughs> yeah, you could pass for Nani though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Nani all the time. <laughs> How young? How young do you guys train? Eight. Eight, Eight. years yeah. old. Yeah. So if you have a seven-year-old who who just headbutt, don't send them. Their other <laughs> sibling <laughs> for no reason. Sign them up to become a goalkeeper next year. <laughs> All right. Well, so uh, follow them uh, at uh, the goalkeeper. Uh, goalkeeper. The, the, no, the keeper. No. The keeper. The, 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 the keeper, keeper yeah, institute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you uh, so much. So we usually always wrap the show by uh, we just scream like the cooligans to the camera. You know exactly yeah. what. So you know doing. exactly uh, how it all works. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll wrap up the show. So. For Tori Cosaro, for Maria Lloyden, for Jill Lloyden. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And together, what are we? The The Cooligans! What's up? It's the world champion, Judah Friedlander, and you're watching The Cooligans. Why? Because you're cool. This is what winners look like right here, man. I mean, you're looking at us. Right now with my legs, I just juggled the ball 80,000 times. (laughs) You missed it. Yeah. He's been playing Keep Me Uppy since I met him. Yep, look faster, guys. (laughs) Go Team USA.